You know what's so dangerous about you, Jamie? You're consumed with the world's perception of you. Kind of understand what's important to Beth, which is loyalty and selflessness. And they are two things that Jamie doesn't hold within himself. He's incapable of it in her mind. But that particular scene when he is full of his own demons of what he's done, he sees himself and she says, you now see yourself the way I've always seen you. And no amount of scrubbing is going to change that. There's obviously something big for Beth that Jamie did that I'm not fully certain Jamie's aware of. I got to tell you something. And it comes from a place of love. You should really consider killing yourself. Does she mean it? I don't know. It's brutal. When I read it, I, I, I really had a hard time with that line. I get the feeling that what Beth feels like happened, Jamie might not even have any idea that whatever happened had this kind of impact. To say that to someone, there must have been some deep, deep betrayal. How hot Beth can go and how mean she can be. There's something to it. There's a tension in there. It's going to be interesting for all of us when we do find out whatever happened between them. John Dutton comes out to Jamie and stops him from shooting himself. It is a precious moment, and I, I know that's a very loaded word in one sense, but it, it is precious. It's a moment that I don't think Jamie's ever had with his dad, which is actually seeing that his dad might not want him to just disappear. I should have never sent you off to school. You needed more time here. I can, I can still give you that. That's what you do when you care about somebody and you see them at that point. I think John is an aggressive personality and doesn't like weakness in himself or in anything and uh, doesn't want to see it in his children. But there's a moment where that all has to wash away. Believe me, what he says there, it's not a great bedside manner. No one will mourn your lost son because this isn't losing your life. This is quitting it. On the other hand, it's about as deep as he can go, which is basically hand me the gun, let's, we're gonna start over. Now what that means, I don't know. This seemed like a moment where obviously he is shattered and possibly on death's door. Give me that rifle, son. The old you's dead the moment you let it go. And his dad, who he thinks hates him, saves him in a weird sense. Now we start working on the new one. I think heaven's right here. Sells hell. One person can be walking the clouds right next to someone enduring eternal damnation, and God is the land. I love shooting the scene with Rip on the roof. It's their place. Again, another indication of their history. I mean, it's Rip opening up, obviously, being honest, you know, to her and to himself. And I think it's, it's a step in you know, the direction of her falling more and more in love with him, you know, and vice versa. And she's up there having a bottle of whiskey, which is nice. What I like about the fact that she's having a drink with him is it's sharing something rather than, you know, trying to annihilate herself. But, I mean, it's multi-layered. I mean, there's never anything in this show where it's like it's one thing and one thing only. There's always something going on beneath Taylor's writing and, and what he does. This is a beautiful scene about being in relationship and talking about how they're feeling and what's going on with each of them, and it just reveals a lot of tenderness, a lot of love. I've been wearing the same three pairs of jeans and jacket for a fucking decade. <laughs> yeah. Probably got more money than me. No. There's laughter in that scene, there's sadness, you know, there's pain. I mean, it's all of those wrapped into one. Out of all of the stuff that I did this year, I think that scene is, is the best written scene for both characters because we get to know each other a little bit more. We get to laugh together, you know, we get to drink together, we get to cry together. I mean, there's a lot going on. So it's, it's, uh, it's those kind of scenes that, that make these characters special. It's one of my favorite scenes in the whole season. And, it, and what's so beautiful about it is 
because of what happens afterwards. It's almost like there is an opening to Beth's heart. Like, oh my gosh, is she about to soften for a minute? And then what happens to her, I think, just shuts her right back up again. Beth. What time is my conference call with Mountain West? 11.30. But Beth. Who's there? It's Malcolm Beck. Beck brothers are the arch enemies this season. They're coming to try and threaten Beth. They're coming to try and scare her, which they obviously don't know anything about her because that's going to be the thing that she's not going to give them. Beth will not show fear. Yes, Malcolm Beck doesn't know who he's dealing with. He's coming to try and intimidate her, threaten her, and she's like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. You're a long way from Billings, aren't you, Malcolm? I don't consider any part of this state beyond my reach. Not sure the state would agree with you on that, buddy. Instead of her backing down, she plays it. And that warrior aspect of Beth is everything. That's, that's where she kicks into gear. And that's when you don't know what she's going to do. That's the problem with playing dirty, Beth. Because when someone plays dirty back, there's nowhere to scream about the injustice you endured. Because if you do, all your filthy laundry just spills right out in the open for everyone to see. I feel there was a bit of fear. And Beth can take it too far, but she can't help herself. It's uncanny how much you look like that boy's dick. She provokes him. I've got the cure for that. We'll see how tough you are after I give it to you. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. She's laying down the gauntlet. It's like, bring it. She knows he's coming. I don't think she knows what's going to happen. I don't think she expected that. But what she knows is that she can't show weakness. He's such a great bad guy. Ma'am. He's got those great eyes and we didn't talk before the scene. He just sort of was staying away from me and I was like, all right. Bring it. Yeah, bring it, exactly. Malcolm Beck came to visit me today. What do you want? Men like him, they just want to be feared. He sends his two masked men who come into Beth's office late at night when she's working. Very difficult scene to shoot. <laughs> ben Richardson directed this episode. He was the DP on season one, so it was an old friend. It was, it was just so wonderful because it was very brutal and emotional for me, actually, that scene, to see Beth in that sort of primal place, try and survive or not or she's gonna to go to her death. I think at that point she thinks she's gonna die. And even at that point, when she thinks she's gonna die, she fights. They were trying to get her to show fear and she wasn't gonna give it to him. And she says to him, you think I'm gonna scream? You think I'm gonna cry? And it's also a great tactic to kind of, not that I think she's thinking of it as a tactic, but there is something about belittling him, the attacker, so he can't get off on it, actually. Here he is, having beaten the shit out of her, and she has still got the power. <laughs> and the scene when I read it gave me goosebumps, and I just knew it was gonna be ferocious and primal, really emotional. Worst thing you could do would be to go after one of the family members, you know. And out of all of them, to pick Beth, it really sets a fire under everyone. Where, you know, now we're really not going to take it anymore and we'll do whatever we have to do. And it really ramps up the, the stakes and the energy of, of everything that follows it. I think you'll get to see just how mean the Duttons can be when they want to. What are we going to do about these Beck brothers? We're gonna kill him, son.